Hi there, I'm Ms. Artastic and in this episode I'm going to be talking about art projects for back to school. So let's dive in on this episode and let's make some art. for back to school would be to create some surrealist postcards. I love doing surrealist postcards. So all I do is I just take some cardstock paper and I chop them in half. Um, that way the space is, well, postcard size. And then also it's good, you know, it's small enough for your students so it's not too big, right? Because sometimes when it's back to school, having a really big piece of paper is really, really intimidating. So we're gonna shrink the size of what they're creating on so it's not so intimidating for them. So that's number one, so we're gonna do surrealist postcards. So what that is, is that I like to um, pre-cut out some parts of magazine pages um, and then I'll probably do you know enough for however many classes I'm doing this for. Um, and then I will put out, uh, you know, five or six at each table and then kids can pick one of them, you know, have an extra, right? In case there's one that people that nobody wants, so then they have an extra to pick from. <laughs> Anyways, they're going to pick one magazine clipping and then they're going to cut it out. You know, I'm not going to do the nice cutting of it. They need to refine it and cut it better. <laughs> and then they're going to glue it onto their page, somewhere on the paper. Next, we're gonna pick one medium to color in a nice, simple background. So maybe it's like, you know, coloring in a nice soft pastel background around it, whatever it is. Um, just generalized color, super simple. And then they can um, illustrate um, one thing and then around it, they can add their own illustration around it. Just draw one thing and then to add to the illustration and then you can finish it off by like adding in a new material. So maybe adding like tissue on top somehow or cardstock or sorry, construction paper somehow. This is when you pull out your scrap paper bin and like your pet fabric scraps, whatever. And they can add some random material on top of that. So they have to like do mixed media processes, layering it all, and then doing this like weird surrealist postcard to something. Yeah, so that's my first idea is I just like to do some surrealist parks cards and just let kids just see how our mediums work together and just be a little bit more, um, they're forced to kind of be a little bit more experimentative with this, right? And explore the mediums. Um, it's not so, they don't know what the end product's gonna look like. They can't, you know, kind of have to work on the spot. You should do one with them and demo it. Um, and then you can just adjust it to however your teaching style is or make it up, right? Because anyways, the idea is that we are encouraging them to be expressive and creative and experimentative on the, in the first little while here, break them outside of their comfort zone and then just have fun with it, right? All right, number two is to do self-portraits. So there's two different ones you could do. You could do a self-portrait in the style of Pablo Picasso, or you could do a self-portrait in the style of Jean-Michel Basquiat. Ah, two different, very different styles. Now, I would pick one as a teacher. You know, it'd be too hard to teach simultaneously Picasso and Basquiat. Um, although you could, if you wanted to, you'd be like, okay, we're going to about look at art and learn of Picasso's style and look at art and learn um, Basquiat. And this would be for older students. And then now you're going to create, you're going to pick one to create your portrait in their style to show what you know. Or just as a teacher, direct uh, self-portrait in the style of Picasso lesson, or a self-portrait in the style of Jean-Michel Basquiat art lesson. And I would also somehow try to integrate students' own interests into that, so like their likes could be included as symbols in their portrait design, right? If they really like dogs, maybe that there's like a dog shirt or like you know, maybe their character's walking a dog, maybe it's Jean-Michel Basquiat. Um, whatever it is, you can try to think about how to um, include their likes and, into their artwork. Um, I think that's a really great way to do that. Now, if you're looking for some pre-planned um, Jean-Michel Basquiat or Pablo Picasso self-portrait art lessons, I do have those as fully planned art lessons with the examples done and all the step-by-step -step pages included uh, and, and rubric, everything's done, reflection pages. 
Um, it's all planned, so if you're looking for mine, you can check them out by clicking the links below in the description of the video. I'll have them there at the top for you to check out. Um, I highly recommend them. That way you can just grab it, go, and teach. All right, my question for you this episode is this, and please answer in the comment section of the video. What questions do you have for back to school? If you have any questions about back to school in art or in general, please, or as an art teacher, please let me know in the comment section below the video, and I would love to help. All right, another thing you could do, number three, is a culture and identity mandala. So you can have, have students create a mandala, and instead of doing it more like, um, like the more the mathematical versions or you know design based pattern based mandalas you can separate the mandala into quarters and in each quarter they can illustrate one part of their culture or identity so you can do a brainstorming part right you can teach about what culture and identity is in one lesson and have them brainstorm ideas of symbols or illustrations that would represent their identity or culture um, and then in the next day um, and you can even do a rough draft right that day just sketching out what those things might look like. And then in the following day, um, they can do their good copy, right? Where they're creating their mandala, um, they're doing their illustrations. You can either decide which mediums they're gonna use or let them choose what mediums they're gonna use to complete it. Um, and of course, you, this could look very different throughout all different grades, right? This might look, you could do this with um, primary students, it'd be a simpler version, um, but you can also do a very intricate version of this in, up in middle school and high school levels. And um, if you're looking for one that's pre-done, I do have a culture and identity Mandela resource. If you want to check mine out, you can click it in the description of the video as well. All right, and finally, there is my back, or sorry, there is, you can do a back to school craft and write, so you can design a craft for back to school um, in the theme of could be apples or pencil, um, whatever back to school craft idea you want. Um, and then you can have students um, integrate uh, art into it. So you could have students complete different parts of the craft by filling in those areas with line. So you can do like wax crayon lines and practice doing line and pattern on the different pieces of your whatever craft it is and then paint over them. Uh, with some paint, watercolor paints, and it will resist, right? So that way you get some art integrated into that craft. Um, they can pick and choose different elements um, to create their craft to get a little bit more choice based. And at the end, you can have them do a writing for it so they can do a um, nonfiction write um, or a fiction writing for back to school. And then that way it's a and a literacy integrated art lesson, right? So now they're doing art, but it's also literacy integrated with the writing piece. Um, if you're looking for a back to school write, I'm uh, sorry, crack and write, I do have one available. It is a cute little pencil and it has lots of choice based elements. So they can pick and choose what pieces they're gonna add to it. Um, and then it also includes all the step by steps, um, all the pick and choose elements to cut and assemble their craft. Um, and then pick a pattern page so they can pick what patterns they want and add it to their uh, draw on their pencil and it's all pre-done and ready to go and it also includes your writing planning pages and also the nonfiction and fiction writing pages at two different levels so that way you can adjust it um, for what grades you're teaching or the abilities of your students and if you would like to check that out again that is also going to be in the description of this video or you can plan your own but if you want one that's already pre-done and all the work done you can check out mine as well all right, my friend, that's it for this episode. If you're looking for the next video to watch, I would check out the first day of school video by clicking the link above or in the description of this video, and I'll talk about what to do on the very first day of school. I'm so excited for that. It is a great video to watch, and I will help you plan that first day so you're not gonna be stressed. You can be a lot more relaxed as well. Um, please make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel that was going to allow me to create these videos for you and continue to do this as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video, first day of school.